You're now listening to Mark Who 42 from the Hooniverse and beyond. Hi, I'm Jeremy Raddick. I played Gareth in the Doctor Who TV movie, and you're listening to Mark Who 42. Theorizing that one could podcast within his own lifetime, Time Lord Mark Who 42 stepped into his torrid and dematerialized. He woke to find himself exiled from his home planet, facing televised images that were not his own, and driven by an unknown force to change podcasting for the better. His only guide on this journey is Tori, a time machine from his own planet, who appears in the form of a police box that only Mark Who 42 can see, but everyone can hear. And so Mark Who 42 finds himself dematerializing from one side of the universe to the other, striving to bring Hoodum back to where it once belonged, and hoping each time that his next dematerialization will be the materialization home. Get these others alive just long enough to serve my purposes. Mitch, wait! Only the animals of this place can leave, Doctor, because they carry it with them. Mitch, listen to me. <laughs> he doesn't remember his name. Go home. So there is a way out. A way out? Yes. We wait for one of us to change, and then we use them before they try to escape or kill us all. And we are here. It is Mark Who 42 live on April 1st. It was not an April Fool's joke. It was not. It's an Easter present. It's a Passover present. It's our sixth anniversary of the Mark Who 42 brand. I'm your host, Mark Baumgarten. With me today are... Patricia Fryer. And hi, I'm a representative of Pixar, here to make sure that there's some trauma fuel with this live show. Because remember, when it's Pixar, your tears sustain us. <laughs> Actually, no. <laughs> hey, here's a cute puppy that reminds you of that doggy you used to have as a child. Oh, here comes the car. Now it's dead. And now you're crying. You're welcome, kids. <laughs> hey, what's up? The overlord of all life, Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse? <laughs> oh, okay. that's not Mickey Mouse! Hello. That's not Mickey Mouse! I'm Mickey Mouse! Don't Hello. listen to this imposter! And the future. Okay, God, you know what? This, this, <laughs> this is really weird because we have never... Well, we did a live show that tested last week, last Sunday. But this is our first ever live show and probably don't have many listeners yet because we're just putting it up on there. You can always listen to this over again when we put it up as a podcast because it is going up as a podcast right after we're done with this. Live from Rockefeller Plaza in Studio 1A. Yeah, Zion, you're here too, aren't you? You're Zion. Hi. Yeah. So, hi, Zion. Uh, you know, this is our last show before we go away for a while uh, wilderness years yeah that, that's why we opened up with uh, survival part three because this is our last episode of the classic series <sighs> and we'll come back with the new the new series will be new who new mark who 42 please no but... romance <laughs> um that's you're already too late zion because yeah trish and i kind of Trisha, I kind of spoiled that. Sorry. 
<laughs> oh, okay. So, 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 so it's okay for Trish and I have the romance, but nobody else can have romance. Okay. Well, thank you. There's thank no you for romance. <laughs> hey, Trish. Trish, we're good. Trish, we're good to have romance. Okay. No, we, no, we, we, there's oh. no hanky panky in the TARDIS. You two have to stop right now. Uh, you can't be. You can't be married. Well, the show's going on hiatus, so you can get together. Uh, I mean, Tom Baker and Lala Ward were. Well, no, that's a bad example. Uh, <laughs> bad example. <laughs> Bad example. Uh, <laughs> so, do we example. do we have any Doctor Who news? Has anything gone on in the world of Doctor Who news in the last week or the last three days? Because we just had a show three days ago. Um, Chris, uh, Chris Eccleston's doing a, a convention. Chris, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's great. Uh, oh, really? wish, wish, wish he had come down to Hurricane Who. But whatever. The unbreakable uh, ball. Or go to or go to Galley One. Galley One, he would have been great. Oh, he would have been well received there. Oh yeah, no, definitely. Oh, yeah. And we would have we would have broke the. Um, yeah, guys, start posting the uh, the posts that I've got on the Marku Forty Two. Uh, <laughs> I've noticed you haven't been doing so, so I'm just post letting you know. Uh, <laughs> I like being live because. We can make mistakes, and you have to listen to them. Because for six years, I have been editing the show meticulously and taking six out years. all errors, uh, trying to get the coughs out, trying to get the the double speak off. And it's been hard to do. We haven't done it all the time. Um, the fact that the show is mono right now, not stereo, makes it hard to remove overlapping. And of course, this show you're just getting live. Yep, and how do you know we're live, booger? Yeah, because we're at no WKRP seven... in Cincinnati right now. We're we're we're, we're broadcasting from Cincinnati and WKRP. <laughs> Baby, if you ever wondered, wondered, wondered whatever, whatever became, became of me. Of me. Mm-hmm. I'm living on the air in Cincinnati, Cincinnati WKRP. Yes. So guys, um, what was your? Because we're we're leaving, and and let, let me introduce. We have a guest coming up in about twenty three minutes. John Davy is coming to the show. We met him at Galley One. He's a real good guy. He has played monsters in Doctor Who. He's played the Ood. He's been Daleks. He's been Cybermen. This, uh, he played unit soldier, so you got to see his face, uh, you know, and an Atmos worker. We'll talk all about that later. And and then at the end of the show, we're going to have a little special surprise guest coming on, and that should be good. Ooh. Yeah. But tell me, what, what was your favorite part about Mark Who 42 over the years? Oh... Hmm. Well, <laughs> my favorite part was finding my husband. <laughs> oh well, yeah, I, I can I can see that. Um, Darn it, she stole my answer. <laughs> yeah, well now well, you have to come up with a different answer. Darn it. <laughs> um, but also, it was just you know I was very new to Doctor Who when we first started. Yes, and it was nice to find people that you know, that I could share my enjoyment of the show with. And because, you know, when it first started, when I first started in Doctor Who, where I live over here in Reno, Nevada, mm-hmm. it was it wasn't well known at all. Like, yeah, I anybody... think it's our fault that mm-hmm. you now have a Doctor Who following in Reno, Nevada. I think so, because it's like <laughs> I remember asking all these people, have you ever heard? watch Doctor Who? Have you ever seen Doctor Who? You know, have you heard of it? And har- nobody. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> absolutely nobody around here, or at least nobody would admit to it. So, now, no one would we have our own club. We, uh, yeah. Nah. Yeah. Weekend Tardis Reno. You know, when I started Weekend Tardis about five years ago, um, I didn't, wouldn't believe that there were so many uh, people out there who 
wanted to view Doctor Who episodes in a crowd. Yes, I did know that. Mm -hmm. I knew that because we did that at conventions back in the 80s. <laughs> so people do do that. And we, we started Weekend TARDIS, and then I gave you permission to open up Weekend TARDIS Reno. And, yeah, people along the way have asked if they can start a Weekend TARDIS. And I, I've said yes, and then I've never followed through with it. Uh, mm -hmm. So I need to start doing that, because Weekend TARDIS is going to continue. Mark Who 42 may stop, but Weekend TARDIS and Weekend TARDIS Reno will continue. And if you want to start your own Weekend TARDIS, Reno, uh, Weekend TARDIS Club in your area, you can contact me at Mark... At, sorry, let's do it. Yeah, mark at markwho42.net. And we will talk and discuss getting uh, a club somewhere near you. And, you know, we can do it, uh, not just America. You can do a Weekend Tardis Club anywhere in the world. Uh, you know, as long as you let me know and we talk about it and get it in there. Because it is a franchise, not not really a paid franchise. I don't think, but it's a, but franchise. a franchise nonetheless. It's a franchise, it's a franchise nonetheless. Yep. So definitely, and all I can say is that the, the, the yeah, the, the crowd is applauding us for everyone out there <laughs> listening to Mark Forty Two is giving us a hand for allowing Weekend Tardis to go around the world because we wanted to go around the world because Doctor Who is a worldwide phenomenon and Mark Who Forty. Uh, sorry, Weekend TARDIS should be too. Mark Who 42 is a worldwide phenomenon too. I mean, we got listeners everywhere around the world. I'm fascinated. I'm fascinated that we have listeners in Kazakhstan. I'm I'm fascinated that we have listeners in South America and uh, all over. Uh, we have some in Russia, people listening to Mark Who 42. I don't know if they're listening to it today, but it would be cool <laughs> if they're listening to us right now. Um, Wait, Putin's al Putin's allowing them to listen to us? Wow! Yeah, hey, yeah, okay. we're not Thanks. we're we're not he's doing anything wrong that he's you know censoring the show. Yeah. You, um, oh, okay. So Dasvidania, oh. folks. Um, wow. Uh, Zion, what's your been your favorite part about Mark Who Forty Two? Um, Being on it, I mean. That's awesome. Um, Honestly, meeting and and seeing the re the regular listeners at conventions and talking to them. Well. Yeah, yeah. Meeting, mm -hmm. Conventions has been a big part of Mark Who 42. We've been going around conventions, not just in Florida, but we've done conventions. I know that you guys have done them in, in Nevada. Uh, ne Nevada? Nevada. Nevada. Is, Nevada. 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 Let's say it right. Yeah. Let's, say, let's get it right. Yeah. Folks, yeah, when don't, you go, don't alienate the listeners over here. <laughs> when you go to Las Vegas, you're going to Nevada, right? Yes. Yeah, you're going to yes, Nevada. You're not going to Nevada. Nevada is 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 Kurt Cobain's band. No, no, that's Nirvana. Yeah. But Nevada. Nevada. Okay. Yeah. I, I, what's I, funny it's is hard that, for me to say. What's it's funny is that, it's a, is that the name comes from, you know, uh, Spanish roots, and so Nevada would actually be the appropriate way it, it does, to it pronounce would be, it. Wouldn't it? Yeah. It's, but yeah, you, you know, if you don't own. want to take the locals off, <laughs> they made it their own, and so Nevada. yes. <laughs> well, they just laughed. The audience just laughed. you can you, nice. you can be forgiven if you have an accent, like you know, like if John Davy was to come on and say Nevada, I it would be. Oh, you know, you're in trouble now. No, <laughs> you're like, yeah, an accent. We can forgive him. Yeah. Oh, just to let you know, John Davy is standing by, but but we're not putting him on yet. We're we're gonna give him a little time to get ready. Um, yeah, Mark Who Forty Two to me has been a lot of things. Um, and one thing, like I said, the conventions, going to conventions around Florida, and then I'm being flown out to Oklahoma City to host the the uh, 50th I'm sorry the 20th anniversary panel and and showcasing Sylvester McCoy and Paul McGann of the TV movie the 1996 TV movie that was an honor and I really appreciate people like Devin Pike and the others that invited me and flew me out to Oklahoma City even though there was um, there, even though there was a uh, earthquake uh, while I was there, 
Um, oh, that's right. <laughs> Mark, you 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 shaking it up. Shaking it up for everybody. Shaking it up. <laughs> did you actually feel the earthquake? Uh, as I it was did. Happening? I was in bed. And I was in bed and I thought it was magic fingers. I didn't realize it was a I, I didn't realize it was an earthquake <laughs> until I went downstairs and they told and I have heard there was an earthquake and I'm like, Really? That's what an earthquake feels like? Pshaw, I don't care about earthquakes. And so when <laughs> I went to LA to to Galley One, I was like, Well, we can have another earthquake so I could have magic fingers in my bed. Uh, <laughs> so Mark, now that you've experienced an earthquake, uh huh, would you rather have an earthquake or a, or a hurricane? Um, well, if it's an earthquake <laughs> like that, I'd rather have an earthquake. Um, well, see, most earthquakes are like what you had. Very rare to have the big ones. Yeah. So yes, I will definitely take earthquakes over a hurricane any day. Well, the well, thing about an earthquake is it happens and then you recover. The thing about exactly. a hurricane is you panic for a week, uh, try to get all your supplies last minute, uh, have to do physical labor p- putting up uh, boards and shutters on your house, and then the hurricane comes and lasts not for just a couple of seconds or a couple of minutes, but for hours and hours and hours. The and entire day. then Honestly. you have to recover. So Well, no, you're forgetting... Is- you're forgetting, Mark. There's also the joys of every time, you know, every every time, same, uh, you know, same, like, same time every year. It's like, oh, you know, earth, you know uh, hurricane season is coming. Do you have your batteries? Do you need batteries? Do you have fresh water? Do you have your supplies? Make sure you have your supplies. And, you know, you can't go anywhere without somebody going... And and would you like some batteries today, Mister Baumgarten? <laughs> Mister Baumgarten, you need five batteries. It's like yeah, there no, there were I'm no fine. batteries. Well, no. Yeah. When I was setting up for the hurricane that we just had last year, there were no batteries anywhere. No really? batteries. I could not find. We we had a we we had to find them in the house under things and put no. beneath, <laughs> behind the sofa. No, it- Oh, now Eddie, I'm gonna I'm gonna embarrass you maybe a little bit right here, but it was just so cute when he first moved out here. We when he after he experienced his first earthquake, he was like, "So, what time of year do you usually have earthquakes?" And I'm like, <laughs> "I'm like, it's not an earth. We don't have an earthquake season. There's an earthquake, an earthquake season. season. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well, you know, hey, it's, it's like I. <laughs> that's like, it. Kind of happened whenever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, no. First earthquake, wait, didn't the first earthquake that uh, happened while I was out here, wasn't I asleep for it? Like, it was just so, so like, you know, well, it was just I, I don't so... remember, but I just remember the one that you actually felt when, yeah. yeah. And... <laughs> yeah. and then you were like, well, how long will the aftershocks last? Yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, don't that, yeah. Okay. I mean, I guess there's some, there's some ways of, no, you know, with the hurricane at least knowing that it's coming and knowing how long you have to endure it, maybe that's somewhat comforting. Yeah, because like an earthquake is I surprise. Would rather, I'd rather be surprised with the earthquake because... You'd rather be surprised. Yeah. It's like if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And, you know, there's whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. It's over relatively quick. Mm-hmm. Most earthquakes only last for like 30 seconds. And if that, so... Give yeah. me that over hours of a hurricane any day. But back back to conventions because we were talking okay. about just, uh, <laughs> conventions. I, I I just it was so much an honor being invited to Oklahoma City. It was so much an honor to be invited to Dallas. We did Hulanta in Atlanta last year, and that was amazing. Um, I just love meeting the fans. I love showcasing myself, and yeah, it'll be a, it'll be a little sad not doing that for a while, you know, because, you know, um, if if anyone out there was going to MegaCon Orlando and looking forward to Marku 42, we have actually um, requested to be taken off the convention because of the wilderness years or wilderness months or whatever we're calling it uh that we will be going through and um that's another reason we're calling this survival episode a part three 
this episode because when this show is over we're you know you don't know the future of doctor who or mark who 42 i keep saying i'm doctor who of mark who 42 i'm being egotistical we're <laughs> mark who 42 is the show doctor who is just the thing that we talk about uh, <laughs> i don't know but um i want to thank everyone who's invited us to a convention i want to thank all the fans who come to the panels we've had great success and we love all you fans out there we couldn't have done it without you we couldn't have done this radio show without you the fans without our guests we've had so many guests on our show um i so remember many. when we had uh katie manning on the show it was her first podcast uh internet interview that she ever did so we were her first and that was really i mean just saying that wow that that, that it, it was really cool Absolutely. having her on um and she's a and she's adorable in real life she's yeah. she's just so off oh, that oh man she's she's like the she's like the, the she's like the doctor who grandmother i never had <laughs> she's just so adorable she's just so adorable <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and one of our old uh, cast members, uh, Patty Hawkins, uh, got to uh, meet her in the flesh and talk to her again at L.I. Who last year, and uh, they went on a date. Well, no, uh, they didn't, but, they wa <laughs> but Patty would have done that in an instant. A date with Katie oh, yeah. Manning? Oh, I'm there. Uh, he yeah. was, he's in love with Katie Manning. Just like I'm in love with Sophie Aldred, who we've had on several times. We've had Ace on this show. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's a great thing, having your childhood heroes on the show. We've had four doctors. We've had Paul McGann. We've had Peter Davison. We've had Colin Baker. And we've had Sylvester McCoy on the show. We've had um, writers, uh, uh, Richard Dinnick uh, on the show. We've had uh, Andrew Cartmel several times. Uh, Simon Fisher Becker, Doria Maldivar himself was on several times. In fact, he was on our 50th anniversary show, our 50th episode. And then on our 100th anniversary show, we had Lisa Bowerman from Big Finish Audio uh, and Survival that we're calling the show. Uh, she, she was in Survival as one of the Cheetah people. Um, so it is a great thing that we have done and we have succeeded in and yes we're going goodbye for a while but you know we will come back we will yes we will come back there will be no tears no sorrows we will come back i'm not doing the actual speech because that would be <laughs> plagiarism uh, <laughs> I don't want plagiarism. No, I don't want plagiarism. It's, no, it's, it's a tribute. It's a tribute. Exactly. It's called oma it's called oma <laughs> Well, I I homaged it in in uh, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for. Doesn't matter. Uh, but we have had such great fun with Marku 42 and uh, Trish. You and I we started this six years ago today wow. as a Facebook page, which was kind of NSFW, and then we immediately opened up a Tumblr page, which was totally NSFW. Oh, yeah, it was. We, 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 you know, the, the David 10-inch joke, uh, it was on there. Oh, the my picture. God. Um, I think we had yeah. Matt Smith. I think we had Matt Smith. Uh, naked. Oh. We, we had Katie Manning with the Dalek. We, I mean, it was, it was, we were going crazy. We were, we were, we were trying to find a, a new way of, of expressing Doctor Who, and we thought, yeah, having a site that we update daily with weird and sexy stuff. But then writer David A. McEntee, who is one of the writers of the books in the Wilderness Years, and a fan of Doctor Who, and a fan of, the, of Mark Who 42, uh, he told me, you know what? Maybe you should tone it down. Maybe, maybe you know, don't go all out there. Do, you know, you can hint at things, but don't don't make it graphic. And so I listened to him because I like his books. I like him and I respected him as a person. So we took made it family friendly. And then in August of that year, 
we started the Marku 42 and Toritori podcast. Yes, that yeah. was that was a lot of work for you. That was even was. more work than what what you did the rest of the time because <laughs> you added special effects and yes. all this stuff to it. And yeah, but you know what though? It's like, and I didn't know what to do with it because I'm not an actress and I didn't know how to portray myself very well. And that's when you decided, I think we need another person on this. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I know a guy down here in Florida that I've met at conventions. Let's see if he'd like to do it. And that's when Eddie came in. And I remember the first time I heard his voice. I'm like, ooh, he's got a nice voice. Oh, did he? Now? So, He had yeah. a nice voice. And, oh, it makes me... Well, what about my uh, voice? I'm, I'm not chicken. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not chicken here. I have a good voice. Don't I? <laughs> I have a radio yeah. voice. No, you know what? My voice goes bad every once in a while. And, uh, but yeah, yeah Eddie Sparks has an there. Eddie. I can see you thinking Eddie had a nice voice. I, I can see it's that. The, well, yeah. well, you see, well, you see, Mr. Baumgartner. The thing is, oh, is oh, that is, is I have the thing? I I have the lat I have the Latin voice. And see, that's the thing. Lat Latinos. Oh. I, we have a voice that just basically makes the ladies melt. It's okay, like the you butter. Know you we're not in doing the... Fantasy Island. We don't need you doing Ricardo <laughs> Montalban uh, here. Yeah. <laughs> see, I was Star going Trek. for. Dude. I was going. Hey, I was going for you know. Antonio hey, Banderas. Uh, so, you were going for Antonio going, Banderas. Antonio, Antonio Banderas. Uh, yeah. Javier. Javier Bardem, you know. Oh, oh, but you go, you go with freaking Ricardo Mont. Okay, fine, fine. I see how it is. All right. Yeah, I'm All right. racist. I, yeah, I this, All right, fine, fine, fine. Yeah. I suppose next you want me to be Cheech Marin. Oh no. Hey man, okay. Dave's yeah. not here. You know? No. Hey, hey. <laughs> hey man, <laughs> like Cheech, what should we do? All right. Hey, so <laughs> we're about we're gonna be adding John Davy to our show in just a few minutes. He's getting ready. John has been featured in 42 episodes of Doctor Who to date over the past 12 years. And the various monsters that he's played are Daleks, Cybermen, Ood, Jadoon, Whisperman, and a unit soldier. He's also performed and assisted with choreography in Doctor Who Live back in 2010, Doctor Who Proms 2013, and the Doctor Who Symphonic Spectacular in Australia back in 2014 and 2015. He's also featured in Rogue One. He was in Star Wars Rogue One, guys. Whoa. Uh, he was in Torchwood, Sarah Jane Adventures, Merlin, Wizard vs. Aliens, Casualty. Oh, yeah, well, less said about Casualty. And Atlantis in uh, various roles. <laughs> His other work includes being a camera operator and still photographer. This guy has worked on projects like Big Brother, X Factor. He's worked with Robbie Williams. You guys know who Robbie Williams is, right? Yep. Good singer. Uh, he doesn't, like an MTV. He doesn't know that. Yeah. He he's worked on music videos for Radiohead. Uh, for oh. his, yeah. Um, and he worked as a lighting cameraman on an animated sequence in the Simon Pegg movie, A Fantastic Fear of Everything. This guy is. I mean, more than just, like, I've been posting the man behind the monsters of Doctor Who. He's had a life. And I think I'm going to, mm-hmm. I think I'm going to try to pull him in now. So let's see if we can add him to the call. Uh, here, the, the show here on Mark Who 42, live, Easter Sunday, April Fool's Day, the sixth anniversary of the Mark Who 42 brand. And I was promised, I was promised chocolate eggs if I came on and did this. Where are my chocolate eggs? Your chocolate eggs are under your pillow. No, they weren't. You lie, liar. You must, you must have you eaten April, them in your you sleep. April, you April, you April. You must have eaten them in your sleep. Uh, no, don't, don't give me that. Don't give me that. You owe me chocolate eggs. Ah, uh, chocolate eggs. Yeah, I mean it is Easter, so I would. You know what I would like? I would like a Godiva chocolate bunny. Maybe. maybe... Oh no 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 no. You're you're supposed to give me the eggs. Okay, no, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't turn around and make it about you getting chocolate. Oh, wow, what the heck just happened there? Ghirardelli. 
Ghirardelli. Ghirardelli, yeah. Oh, yeah, see, there you go. Okay, there you go. See, I'm upping it. I'm upping it. Now you owe me Ghirardelli chocolate eggs. Okay, That's so I think right. we have him now, Mr. John Davey. Hello, John. Oh, yeah, I'm here. You do have me. We have you. Oh. Wow. Well, have me so, now. John, we're going to introduce ourselves to you while we're doing the show. If you just turn your volume up a little. Just a little bit. Um, hang on. I got to try and work. I'm doing it from my phone, so I've got to try and work out which end to talk to. So. <laughs> is, is that louder there, or is this louder here? It's louder it's there. Louder. Yeah, louder yeah there. there you go. Yeah, are, are, right. we at a, are we at an eye doctor's where there's like, can you see better this way or number two? Better three? Number, num, better number one four. or number two? Yeah. Number Number two? Number three? John, I talking? am Mark Baumgarten, and we sorry, met at Galley sorry, 1. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't quite catch where I'm supposed to be talking. Am I talking here or talking there? There. There you go. There. Okay, okay. There. You talk there. I talk there. You could, I mean, talking <laughs> here on Mark Who 42 is a good thing, but you want to talk there into your phone. I do. Thank you. <laughs> so, John, I'm Mark Baumgarten. We met at Galley One. Uh, I was the one who we invited, certainly you, did. invited you to the show, and I'm so glad that you came on and uh, are doing this with us. Yeah, yeah, no, it was great. I, unfortunately, I haven't had time to uh, listen to previous episodes, so I don't uh, exactly know what what your flow is as such. But um, yeah, I'm uh, more than happy to just talk away, really. Okay. Well, let me let me introduce our other podcast mates here, or radio. I don't know what we're called anymore. We were a radio show, and uh, now this one's going live, so I guess it's a radio show. Uh, we have Eduardo M. Fryer. Ed? Yeah, uh, nice to talk to you again, Mr. Davey. I also met up with you at Galley. I was with I was with Mark during the um, the the cocktail, and you know I know that I I came by your table the next day and. Cool. Told you yeah, don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. Told told you don't worry. You weren't, you know, you were you were fine the night before. Uh, well, I don't know whether I was or not. There's very little that I remember about the, uh, the nights <laughs> in the Marriott at Gallifrey One. It all uh, oh, becomes a bit of a blur. <laughs> was that from all the from all the imbibing? All the what? Sorry. The imbibing, the drinking that was going on uh, downstairs. Yeah. Upstairs. Yes. Well, it's. It's, it's sort of spending eight eight hours kind of uh, on it, and all of a sudden having a load of drinks, and it sort of um, all becomes a blur. But it was all it was all great fun, and obviously, you know, every Doctor Who convention that I go to, Whovians do seem to like to get drunk. So uh, it's, uh, <laughs> we do. It's not, it's it's not it's just, just an American thing. thing. It's, it's it's the same back in the UK as well. Uh, oh, well, that you know, I've been to. We have a common. I've I've been to I've been to other conventions. I went to a I went to a convention for the uh, the franchise GI Joe, what uh, right. the one that's known as Action Force in the UK. And yeah, the the guys there. One after hours, it's you know, yeah. There's there's some there's some imbibing there too. Uh, there's also going to do karaoke and taking pictures and threatening to blackmail people with the release of said pictures. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I think I think one of the craziest um, experiences I had was uh, um, a friend of mine uh, used to put on a convention um, in uh, Exeter in the UK, and mm-hmm. uh, basically there'll be a load of co- uh, colonial marines and um, someone in an alien suit sat in a hot tub drinking beer. <laughs> oh my! <God>. Okay, <laughs> all right, I hey. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we we have uh, Ed's wife, uh, who was one of the co- co-founders of this show six years ago, uh, Patricia Fryer. Hello, hey, how Dave. are you? I'm very well, thank you. Oh, good. Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you. I just had a a, a nice Easter lunch and oh. had way way too much to eat, so um, <laughs> so it's, oh, it's nice that I'm having a bit of a bit of a sort of rest now. That's good. It's, that, it's, well, it's good to. It's good to I'm lying, da- lying down doing the podcast. Oh, oh are you? <laughs> okay. okay. Well, Why hey, not? as long as long you know, as long as you're comfortable, whatever makes oh, you comfortable. As long as you have your pants on, that's all we're saying. Uh, well, they can come <laughs> off. No, 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 no. That's, that's well, we're not going. videos, so go ahead, go with whatever you want. You know, we're we're open. <laughs> we're an open society now. Zion oh, Kiros is here too. Zion, say hello to the man. Hello, hey. Mr. Davey. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well, thank you. And you? 
I'm doing pretty well, thank you. Cool. Where where all of you guys based? Okay, uh, I am based in South Florida. Zion is based in Orlando, and Ed and Trish are in Nevada. Nevada. Am I saying uh, that right, cool. Trish? Yes, Nevada? Reno, Nevada. Neva- Nevada, 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 Nevada. Nevada. Yeah, she gets, not Nevada, she gets bad no. when I pronounce it wrong. Well, it's a local thing here, yeah. You know, <laughs> people get upset. Not necessarily me. I'm originally from California, so, yeah. Cool. Well, I, I guess, obviously, you're enjoying um, some hot, sunny weather at the moment, whereas in the UK, again, it's just grey and raining, um, as it has been probably for about six months now. So, um so I was very uh, I was very grateful that I um that I came to Gallifrey One and as soon as I turned turned up in LA I was like I, I just don't want to go home I just want to just sit out in the sun <laughs> and I'll be happy with that. Oh yes, the weather it, was really nice. It's 81 degrees Fahrenheit right now outside my uh, house. Uh, oh, wow. and, and sunny. Okay. It's sunny oh, here, but it's only forty nine. It's only forty nine. <laughs> Here. Oh, it's 49 degrees. See, I'd rather be in 49 degree weather than 81 degree weather. I, I, I like cold. I'm from New York originally. And I'm, I'm, I just love the weather there, not here. Well, I kind of I kind of feel the same way, Mark, in the sense that, uh, you know, coming from South Florida, you know, coming from South Florida, it was great having like, a, you know, some sort of seasonal change mm-hmm. rather than just you know, rather than just the warm weather with maybe a week where it goes to about 50 or so. So, you know, it's it, it's nice having, although I will admit I also have gotten to the point where I'm like, okay, I've had enough winter. <laughs> had enough winter. I'm good. I'm good now. Okay, it can warm up. That's fine. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's a, very, it's a very mild 46 degrees uh, in the oh. UK and raining. All right, so that, that's oh, pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. My my sister lives in Aylesbury, so she's she's having she's having nice weather, a cold weather there too. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Um. So, John, I gotta tell you, I don't know if we told you this. Besides this show being live, this mm-hmm. show is our last show for a while. We're 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 going into the wilderness years, just like Doctor Who did back in nineteen eighty nine. You are officially our last main guest. We might have someone stop by at the end of the show, but you are oh, our cool. official last main guest. So thank am you. Am I the show? Cl- I'm the show closer. Then am I? You're closing the show. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, I just realized that. Yeah, I guess you're the show closer. Uh, <laughs> but no, no, no. We'll we'll make sure we get someone else on to close the show so that you don't have to be the man who. <laughs> Mark forty two. We'll make sure of that. <laughs> hey, it could be uh you know, it could remember it could be worse. Okay? It could always be worse because, you know, you could be like uh Malcolm McDowell who did a Star Trek movie and for a while was known as the guy who killed Captain Kirk, so Yes, that wouldn't uh yeah, that wouldn't <laughs> Yeah, we don't well we yeah. yeah. So you're you're not killing Mark Who forty two, this is a conscious yeah, no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> Worst you know wor- worst worst case, you know, we could always edit it so instead we uh, fall off a bridge. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and we can wake up uh we, we go into uh the bathroom and oh there's Mark Who forty two in the shower. It didn't actually oh, end God. after all. Oh, 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 shower retcon. Ah. Uh, I, I, Dallas was a good show until that. Uh, yeah. They destroyed that, Dallas. Didn't it, didn't, that, wasn't there some other ludicrous storyline as well? Um, was it before or after that? Well, what, the Who Shot JR? No, no, no we, it was obviously the whole kind of like, it was all a dream thing. But I think well, right, right. They did... Some, I don't know. They, I think they did some else. They've done a, done a lot. Of, they, they, they jump they, in the shark. Yeah, they well, well, no, the I, shark. Well, I, I know that. I know that for the series finale, they had kind of a takeoff, and it's a wonderful life. And it turned out that uh, with Jr. and it turned out that the person who was speaking to him was the devil. And it ended in this cliffhanger where Jr. pulled out a gun, and you heard a gunshot. I don't then, remember it, that episode. I probably didn't did. Yeah, that. I knew there was. Some, well, no, well, no, the rest of some really ludicrous. Yeah. Well, no, <laughs> well, no what, what what was ludicrous though was um was when they brought Dallas back and they had you know Jr. back 
they explained that what happened was the gunshot you heard and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, having uh, Patrick Duffy come in and go, oh, my God, JR shot out a, a mirror. It's like, oh, okay, wow. All right, so, huh. So the, uh, the the Rising Emmy Award goes to <laughs> yeah. In this case, not you. Not you. <laughs> so, John, t for people who don't know who you are, and, and tell a little about yourself so that the audience can learn a little about you. Okay. Well, I I've done and I do quite a lot of things, but one of the things, and predominantly the reason why I'm here, is that. I've uh, been playing many of the monsters on Doctor Who since 2005. Um, I think I've, I think I've added it up right, and it's 42 episodes. So that that's perfect, in. Mark. Who 42? We end with someone who's done 42 Doctor Who episodes. That's well, if that was all planned. You know, they did offer me uh, a role on the new season, and I thought, you know what? No, I'll turn it down because it's. Uh, you know, there's some nice uh, serendipity going on here. Thank you, John. We appreciate that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I start, started on the show um, in season two playing one of the Cybermen in the uh, four Cybermen episodes. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> I kind of accidentally got it. There was a, there was a casting where uh, 50 guys turned up and were all similar height and builds. Uh, and we spent a day uh, with the Doctor Who choreographer, a lovely lady called Elsa Burke. And uh, we spent a day uh, marching around and walking around with our eyes closed and doing a lot of other uh, weird, strange things. Uh, and then we were told this is an audition to be the monsters on uh, Doctor Who, which uh, I'm sorry, the Cybermen on Doctor Who. Mm -hmm. uh, which you know was amazing then obviously we were told you can't tell anyone um <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was like, oh yeah you, right, can, okay. you can tell people that you were on our show by the way you can tell people that. oh yeah, yeah because this will be this will be available domain, to people to listen to if they're not listening live it will be available as of this afternoon uh all over on iHeartRadio and and all that and itunes and stuff Cool. Um, yeah, so so uh, our next stage was to go uh, and try the costumes on, which were made by Millennium Effects, mm -hmm. uh, that make pretty much most of the co uh, monster costumes for, uh, for Doctor Who and uh, many other things. Um, so uh, we went up, and it was a case of if the suit fits, then you get the job, and um i managed to uh, squeeze into the suit and um <laughs> uh, yeah ended up doing uh, about 32 days on um on the four side man episodes in uh, series two um oh. little did i know at the time that i would then be asked back to do um most of the other monsters uh, since yeah you you've been an ood a jadoon a dalek you've actually yes. given the dalek casing yeah, well, the um, um, before before I did the Daleks, um, I did the Cybermen um, and also the Ghosts um, in the uh, Army, Army of Ghosts, Ghosts as well, yeah. the, the Silhouettes, um, the Ood, uh, the Hev Heavenly Host from the Voyage mm -hmm. of the Damned. Um, I played an Atmos worker in the Sultaran Stratagem. So we got to where... see your face. You you did have the uh, the the glory of um, beholding my face. <laughs> and, um, uh, basically, I'm stood at the um, end of a corridor where the cloning chamber is, and a couple of uh, unit soldiers uh, come up to me, and um, I, I get given one of the greatest lines in Doctor Who. I'm stood by a door, the door opens, and I say, "It's open." So come on, way to go, come man! Yeah, yeah. Let's, All let's right. a round of applause, folks. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, yeah, then I played, played the Hath in the Doctor's Daughter, the Jadoon in Stolen Earth and Journey's End, um, uh, Cybermen in the Next Doctor, uh, Winders from the Beast Below. Uh, yeah, and then the Daleks. So um, that was in Victory of the Daleks. Mm -hmm. um, so we uh, we got called into the uh, the BBC studios, and uh, we had to give up our mobile phones as well. It's all very cloak and dagger. And 
we uh, we then uh, met, or, I've, I've, or I met before um, uh, Barnaby Edwards and uh, Nick Pegg, that were the um, the main Dalek operators uh, in the previous episodes, mm-hmm. and uh, we had a, a day of Dalek 101 training. Um, you know, making sure the movements are are correct, and they're actually um, they are actually quite tricky to actually maneuver. Um, you're you're sat inside the Dalek on a little piece of wood, which is supposed to be a seat, but it's literally just a piece of wood. Mm-hmm. And the Dalek consists of one wheel at the front and two wheels at the back, and you pedal it around a bit like Fred Flintstone. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's all very very low tech. Um, they, not motorized. You, well, the the problem is, is if you have five Daleks and the motor breaks down on one Dalek, you can't film. So right. it's kind of, you know, the simplest solution is the best. Um, what Daleks do have a tendency to do is that they they tend to strafe if you pull them forwards. And so the, the back starts coming out. So you have to make very small steps um and then if you feel the back drifting out you have to kind of compensate on the uh on the other side um Mm -hmm. it's perfectly fine in a studio on a concrete floor but um occasionally i have done it outside which um can be uh can be very problematic um so so yeah i was the orange dalek the dalek scientist in the ever so popular paradigm dalek series oh Um, yeah those paradigm daleks i'm sorry you had to wear one of the one of the orange ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, was so, I was so happy when they decided, you know what, we're not going to do these Paradigm Daleks. We're going to go back to the Daleks. Cause... Yeah, well, the, those original, those original, um, you know, bronze gold Daleks were, were just, or still are, beautiful. And yeah. I guess the story was, you know, bigger and better Daleks. They were bigger, <laughs> but not really better, I guess. Well, yeah, but um, don't make it look like it's the Power Ranger Daleks. I they mean, were the, you know, they were the I'm, Power Rangers. I'm sure Rangers. there was a, possibly a marketing angle, maybe, <laughs> that you've got five different things yeah. instead of buying one different thing, but I don't know. Who knows? Um, so, yeah, so that was a, that was fantastic to actually um, be, be a Dalek, and the entire scene was shot in an old uh, tobacco factory in Cardiff. Mm-hmm. And it was uh, basically a giant steel room, which was a which was a humidor, um, and it got very very hot. Um, oh. And I think they probably left us in there for about three hours. Oh. Um, it, it was getting yeah. hotter and hotter, and uh, I just thought, oh, you know, this is awful. And and I wore a long sleeve top and a pair of, pair of uh, jogging bottoms. Uh, because obviously the, the inside of a Dalek has got lots of bits of fiberglass that you could skag yourself on. Um, so uh, eventually, when they said, um, "Oh, we'll get the guys out of the Daleks," um, me and a couple of the other guys basically were just sat there in our pants, our underpants. <laughs> so, so when you watch that scene, there are um, you know potentially three three guys in their uh, in their underpants actually doing that scene in the Daleks. I will never watch that episode the same ever again. <laughs> <laughs> you have changed my whole attitude on that episode. <sighs> um, but yeah, that so that was that was uh, um, you know a, a great um, you know a great moment to have actually been a been inside a Dalek on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, oh, and another qu- quite funny story about that is that. When the Daleks make their entrance, um, there's like a big kind of flash and a load of smoke. And um, they decided um, to to bring the Daleks up up a ramp, which was very difficult to kind of get the momentum to keep going up the ramp. Mm-hmm. Um, but with all the smoke, um, we could hardly see a thing. So on the first take, uh, they said Daleks go. We went up the ramp, and unfortunately, the, uh, the the Daleks have designed the doors on their spaceship about two inches wider than the Daleks themselves. Oh. So if you were if you were one inch one inch to one side, you wouldn't fit through the door. So we all go 
we all go flying up and um, the supreme garlic, the white one, which I, I can't remember whether it was Barney or, or Nick, basically couldn't see where the door was, got stuck on the on the door frame and then all the other Daleks just kind of shunted up behind. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we made a suggestion about putting a chalk line on the ramp. Um, so we were actually looking down with a head torch on at this line following up and, uh, and we did it. We did it on the second take. Hmm. Well, that's good. Uh, I um, wish we could do this show on the second take sometimes, but we got <laughs> to go with the first. And sometimes we do crash into that door. <laughs> Are um, any any of the costumes that you wore actually com- comfortable or anything? Um, the the Cybermen costumes weighed about four stone, which is oh. about sixty pounds, something like that. Wow. Um, one wow. of one of the one of the guys, Ken decided to bring in a set of bathroom scales and kind of weighed himself just because he was curious. Um, so wearing those costumes all day long was, was you know, it was a workout. Um, and also because they were made out of fiberglass, they were very inflexible. So mm-hmm. um, it was, uh, yeah, it was, the thing is, it was almost worth wearing one of those for 12 hours a day to take it off at the end of the day and feel four mm-hmm. stone lighter and... Uh, much more comfortable um but in saying that we had uh, we had great fun playing the cybermen you know you could imagine 12 guys in cybermen costumes sat around <laughs> talking <laughs> talking all sorts of nonsense um but uh yeah i think i think probably the most comfortable costume was the ood which was just a big foam latex mask that we pulled on o- over our heads um sometimes they were so comfortable you kind of ended up falling asleep inside of them um mm. but um but yeah no the um yeah no the, the, well, the daleks were great because you sat down whereas uh <laughs> many of the other costumes it's quite difficult to actually rest and uh and take the weight off of you okay um, so you know well so you know while we're on the subject actually then uh i just want to ask so of, of all the of all the costumes you've worn um yeah. What would you say was probably the uh, probably like the the easiest, the quickest to get into, and what would be what was like what took the longest uh, and or the most difficult to get into? Um, the easiest was probably the oud. Um, uh, um, pretty much for what I just said, it was just a big big foam yeah. latex mask, and you're wearing a kind of um, almost like a set of overalls. The one that took the longest was uh, when we played the Whisper Men in the name of the Doctor. Mm-hmm. Um, that mm-hmm. was a uh, that was a, a full prosthetic makeup which consisted of uh, having a, a bold clap bold cap glued to our head, uh, foam latex um, sort of cheekbones, forehead, and chin uh, glued to our face. Uh, then we were basically painted with a with a base layer, and then. The detail was airbrushed in, uh, and then a, 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 a lady's white stocking pulled over our heads, and then the the mouth was cut and then glued to our lips. Um, and yeah, that took that took three hours. So we started at four in the morning. Um, oh jeez! Around seven, and then it would take almost up to an hour to actually uh, try and rip the thing off of our face and and uh, get all the glue and paint off. Um, mm. so I think the worst thing about that was that you couldn't breathe through your nose, so you had to breathe through your mouth all day long. Um, and also, uh, the stocking squished your nose, so you kind of had a, a flat, bruised nose at the end of the day. Um, and also, you, you practically couldn't see, so you spent 12 hours a day not being able to see and having to try and maneuver your way around a set without. Um, kicking Richard E. Grant in the shins. <laughs> oh, oh. Um, and then it is a very strange uh, thing because at the end of the day, when they take it off and you finally can see, it's it was almost like sensory deprivation. You know, you just had you had your sight back, and it was almost too much to kind of 
uh, look at things. Um, but they were they were very scary, and we had these we had these like awful looking teeth um, dentures almost. And uh, when we went to the canteen, which we share with. Um, some other BBC shows, uh, BBC shows, including one called Casualty, which is like a hospital drama. Mm-hmm. Um, we would walk in there, and um, um, quite a few of the uh, the lady nurses just couldn't be in the room with us, so they kind of had to, <laughs> had to run out. We did actually get banned from eating anything messy because obviously we would have got some, uh, <laughs> some tomato sauce on our on our uh, stocking makeup that would have ruined it. So it was uh, it was drinking soup through a straw unfortunately it was normally chunky vegetables so that didn't really go <laughs> straw very well mm. or uh, or just dropping uh, dropping chips into our mouth like a like a seagull feeding their young <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> so, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, all, it's all glamour and rock and roll in the uh, in the doctor who world yeah we you were giving us a, a, a rundown of the episodes you've done and we, we've gotten up to victory of the daleks so if you want to continue from there Sure. Um, so after Victory of the Daleks, um, I did an episode called The Lodger where oh, um, yeah. they, mm-hmm. they were having the football match, um, and I was the uh, <clears throat> I was the goalkeeper on um, on the doctor's side, which basically meant I didn't really do a lot. Um, and uh, oh yeah, there's a funny story actually. Um, Football, or I guess, obviously, soccer. You call it. And I call it so, football. Um, I'm, 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 I'm European. I'm, I'm ah, football. cool. That's great. Yeah, you kick it with your foot. Yeah. Um, so we we basically were warming up. So normally, what you do in in soccer, football, uh, you kind of make a make a circle, and then you just uh, keep kick the ball from one person to the other, and try and keep that going as long as possible. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the guys kicked the ball to me but he kicked it a little bit uh weakly so i kind of lunged for the ball connected with the ball and then uh, volleyed it right into matt smith's um <laughs> gentleman area oh. 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 <laughs> and then it, it, obviously he was he collapsed to the floor and was rolling around in pain and obviously i felt like a right idiot for doing that um, I was then late, later on in another scene, uh, which was in the call centre, mm-hmm. and um, I was actually I was actually sat next to Matt, and uh, he was um, he was sort of you know rehearsing and bounding around and being you know extremely excitable, and uh, he led back on his uh, office chair and stretched his arms out, but the uh, the office chair back was set to actually recline so oh. he reclined with his arms outstretched and then ended up um, clocking me on the nose <laughs> and uh, he said he said right i got you back now for the other day so, <laughs> <laughs> i don't know whether that was planned or not but um but, yeah that was uh, yeah that was a uh, great fun um i then did uh the pandorica opens which i I think I think I was in that three times. Yeah. Um, you have the opening scene with Dorian and River Song having their uh, little meeting in a sort of, some sort of a, a, a like bar, mm-hmm. um, and there's like some beaded curtains, and then there's a couple of guys uh, at the bar. Um, I think we we were arguing or something, um, but I'm wearing a white spacesuit, so I'm I'm kind of just like a blur in the background. Um, I then did um, the uh, one of the Daleks as well when the whole mob of mob of monsters, um, you know, sent sent the Doctor to the actual Pandorica, mm-hmm. um, and then uh, then I did what I think is probably uh, my most favourite thing in Doctor Who is I played the uh, the headless Cyberman that walks around the corner and then picks up his head. <laughs> <laughs> so um uh, it was uh, there's there is if you go on youtube and put in headless pandorica cyberman i think there's actually a video up there and it, oh, oh. Think i've actually put it on my website as well so um so the story goes is that they the cyberman had a had one of his arms missing so they got an actor who had his left arm missing to do mm-hmm. the scene um but um toby haynes who was directing it 
couldn't or, or didn't have enough time to actually get the reveal of the Cyberman walking around the corner and actually picking up the head. Right. So they basically did that as a pickup shot, but couldn't get the other actor back. So they got me along and they uh, they basically put a green morph suit on me and then the Cyberman costume over the top, Sam's, right. Sam's head and arm. Um, so did the whole, did the whole thing um, like that, and then with the magic of visual effects, uh, they uh, literally deleted my head and arm. And um, yeah, when you watch it, it's, it is great because a lot of people said, "Oh, I thought it was like a animatronic thing or, or CGI." <laughs> um, but um, but I added I added a little touch myself. I I kind of thought of the practical real world, and I thought, well, if I've got an arm missing, then I'm going to be slightly off balanced. So I thought, well, I'll just do the whole scene just leaning over slightly to one side, and if um, if the director's not happy, then I'll correct it. So um, obviously he was happy, and I'm I'm happy as well because I know I've added that little nuance that uh, that you know it is possibly what would happen if there was an arm missing on a robot. So mm. um, so yeah, so that was um, that was uh, yeah, that was a uh, great fun doing that, and. Um, um, and especially having uh, the Doctor Who Confidential film, the behind-the-scenes stuff as well right. for it, was was a, a real added bonus. Um, I'll go down through my list. Um, a Good Man Goes to War. I was right at the top of the show as the cyber leader when Rory enters the Cyberman spaceship. Oh, that's a powerful scene. Yeah, it's, it's great. Well, it's great to be the cyber leader as well uh, with the mm-hmm. iconic... Um, the black handlebars and, uh, and the brain showing. Um, if you do watch it, 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 look at the actual top brain section and it, mm-hmm. it looks a bit steamed up because basically uh, we, sh- <laughs> we shot the entire thing in a, in a factory that was still running because um, normally they look for a location that will look slightly futuristic so they don't right. have to set dress it. Uh, So this was shot, I think it was a L'Oreal shampoo factory. And um, it was exceptionally hot. So, you know, we're baking away in our Sideman costumes and the the heat from me has actually steamed up the uh, the Perspex brain dome, Mm. which which is quite funny. Um, um, I was also uh, a Jadoon in that as well, when they uh, basically have the big speech with all the, uh, the the clerics in that mm-hmm. huge, huge, great big hangar, um, and and I also paid a, a cleric in in the same scene as well. Um, let's have a look. What else is there? Um, oh, there's a really nice little little kind of um, well, they call used to call it the red button thing because they used to do a thing where a little red icon would come up on the screen if you press the red button on your remote. Mm-hmm. You'll get extra content, and it was a scene. Um, I think it was closing time. There was uh, basically a scene with Madame Kavorian and River Song in the library, right. and it, this because I never really got it when I watched it. It's like why is River Song in a astronaut's costume? Um, but this little scene itself actually shows you what happened so uh me and a friend of mine chester we walk in um as a couple of uh clerics and we have the astronaut costume and then grab grab alex kingston and then knock her unconscious and then she uh, she wakes up in the uh, in the astronaut costume so uh that's another another little sneaky sneaky peek at my face um <laughs> Uh, stop me anytime you want if you need to sort of interject any uh, any questions. Anyway, um, looking down, I- I'm enjoying this. It's the first time I get to do a show where I get to keep my mouth shut. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> Should probably do it more often. Oh, you and you're off the show. Uh, <laughs> well, this is well. You're going uh, oh, well, hiatus anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh yeah, we did we did the Asylum of the Daleks as well, which was um, which was fantastic. So um, yeah, there was there was a whole mob of us in various different um, 
Daleks uh, in different states of mm-hmm. disrepair and also uh the parliament of the dalek scene as well um i was um i was basically down on the big kind of white circle in the middle of the parliament um right. nick Peck was the other dalek and then barnaby was playing uh the supreme daleks um so yeah more more dalek action um most of the time was just i think there's about 20 of us there and then they replicated the Daleks. Most of the time was spent with us just texting all the other guys in the Dalek and sending uh, <laughs> rude, rude jokes to each other. Um, but what's always quite interesting is is that if you actually stay still in a Dalek, no one knows you're actually in there. So people will be having conversations and you could just eavesdrop on what, <laughs> what people were saying. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, sneaky peeping Tom Daleks uh, going on on set there. Um I then uh, briefly paid a unit soldier in the Bells of St. John, uh, which was up in the up in the call centre scene, but that wasn't really sort of any action. Oh, the Rings of Ackerton. Mm-hmm. Um, I played one of the uh, the vigil, those kind of creepy, uh, creepy looking creatures that um, kind of did the bidding of the uh, of the mummy. Right. Um, and those were um, yeah, those were uh, brilliant fun to play. You know, actually, um, can I can I just uh, I, I need to I need to ask a question about that um, sure. because uh, Rings of Akatan, one of the uh, one of the various aliens that's you know watching the whole thing going on looks a lot like a hath, uh, and I've always just wondered is it was it supposed to be a hath or did they just did somebody just grab like whatever costumes were available and just like okay we'll we'll take this we'll color it a different color it's a different alien yeah it was it was pretty much that it was um yeah it wasn't a half but it looked very much like it and millennium effects basically kind of you know put together various different costumes um uh and i think if you look if you look closely there was a couple of the characters and they were in the marketplace scene and the costumes suspiciously look like the, oh, uh, um, what were they called? Necro Necromungus from the uh, Chronicles of Riddick. Mm-hmm. Really? Uh, yeah. Um, I saw a commercial the other day, actually, with uh, someone wearing that. So, it, it, you know, it, it carries on the, um, the age-old tradition of, of recycling costumes and obviously famously... Um, the uh, the costume of um, Bosk from Star Wars was actually used in Doctor Who uh, previously to that. So um, uh, you know, re- recycling is always is always good. Um, <laughs> so, well, also yeah. also saves a saves a bundle on the budget. Yeah, yeah, it's it's um, you know. It, it's there's a lot of production value in that show and you know wherever you can uh you know repurpose uh stuff that it doesn't look too obvious then it's um is uh definitely uh definitely the way forward um yeah then after that was the uh the name of the doctor where we played the, uh, the whisper men that i touched on mm-hmm. earlier so that was uh, that was great fun. Uh, there was four of us. I think we did five days in a row, um, and yeah, by the end of the week, um, we were quite tired, and our skin wasn't in the greatest of condition. But uh, that's the uh, that's the glory of being a being a monster and being in prosthetics. Um, after that, oh, day of the doctor. So the uh, the fiftieth episode. Um, uh, I played one of the uh, the Daleks in the Time War right at the very top of the show, mm-hmm. um, which was uh, which was great fun. That was actually filmed um, in a trading estate near Ponty Pool in Wales, mm-hmm. um, which has been used for oh, blimey, it's been used for loads. It was used for the Sultaran Stratagem, the the um, the Ood episodes. Um, it, it's basically a disused warehouse. So anything right. previous to that that looked like a disused warehouse. Oh, Voyage of the Damned, the the Max Capricorn scene that was all filmed there as well. Hmm. So they they build this enormous outside set, and uh, we we came trundling down a, a kind of 
compacted uh, dirt path in the Daleks and uh, did our scene. And then when we had to reset, we had to kind of go back uphill and Daleks and going uphill doesn't always kind of... Uh, marry up very well but um but yeah it was uh it was really special to uh, be a part of that and um it did look um pretty awesome i also played a unit soldier as well in that scene so when the uh doctor and clara walk into the uh gallery with the uh with the big the big painting of um uh the tenth doctor um uh, if you well it's also on my website but if you actually look at the scene as they walk in there's two unit soldiers right uh, on the outside and i'm on the left and then when they do the reverse shot there's two unit soldiers by the painting and if you look at the right it's uh it's me again so um <laughs> yeah Re- repurposing um you know human bodies is is very good and then i had a kind of sneaky cameo appearance uh in the under gallery scene so they go to the under gallery and they've got the statues or what they thought of the statues with the shrouds over their heads, which were Zygons. Uh, but there were only two Zygons, which were played by Aidan Cook and Paul Casey. But they wanted the appearance that there were probably six. So uh, uh, me and the other guys who were dressed as unit soldiers basically mm-hmm. jumped under the shrouds. Uh, so if you watch that scene, if you look on the, le- the right-hand side uh, at the front where I was... If you look at the top of the shroud, it suspiciously looks exactly the same shape as a unit soldier helmet because <laughs> that's what it was. Um, so I kind of made a sort of um, clandestine appearance uh, in that scene. Um, then a Dalek again in the time of the Doctor in Christmas Town, which was um, which was pretty challenging because they had uh, they had fake snow on the floor, mm-hmm. which is pretty much just paper mache they they mix small part paper particles and water together and just spray the floor uh and there was a scene where we had to go past the dalek which was basically going uphill on a on a unkept road with fake snow and the daleks basically are just like snow plows so we we just basically had to just try and stand up as much as possible and push those things past the camera um John, uh, I have a question yeah. for you. You, yeah, you sure. were on set when Prince Charles came, weren't you? Yes, they had a they had a royal visit at the BBC studios, um, and they basically wanted to just put a presentation on. I, I don't know why, but um, <laughs> so there was various different things going on, and then um, me and a few of the other guys were uh, dressed up as monsters. There was a a couple of Daleks. There's my friend Jamie uh, Hill, who played uh, the Silence. He was there, and mm-hmm. my other friend uh, Simon Carew, who who played um, a Cyberman. And I was dressed as an Ood. And uh, they were kind of walking down the line of us, and uh, and Camilla uh, stood up to me and grabbed my tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> I had to enunciate mm-hmm. there. <laughs> and she said, I remember these horrible things. And I, at the time, I was like, I'm not really sure how to take that. And I don't really know where she remembers them from. <laughs> um, but there's, a, there's a, a very lovely picture that the, um, ended up on the Daily Mirror's website of her, her actually tentacle tickling. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's all fun and games. And... Um, I, we've we I've done quite a few live events. Um, I've also done. Uh, there was a show called Doctor Who Live back in I think 2011, mm-hmm. which was a it was a st- it was like a stage traveling stage show. It was an arena show, right. and um, they they couldn't get Matt Smith because obviously he was filming the show, but. Um, a, a great actor called Nigel Planer, who's mm. um, been in yeah, like all him. sorts of things. Good. Yeah, the young, the young ones was the sort of big break back in the day. Um, he was a like a travelling kind of showman called Vorgenson, uh, son of Vorg, which is obviously a throwback to Carnival of the Monsters, mm-hmm. is it? Mm-hmm. Um, and he would come out on stage and he would say, you know. 
look at me, aren't I wonderful? And he had a glove on which was a minimizer, and he minimized the monsters, and then he could bring them out at will to show the the paying audience. Then, obviously, in true Doctor Who style, right? Oh, it all goes wrong, and the monsters escape, and it was um, yeah, it was brilliant. It was a, it was a great story, and um, with rehearsals and performing, I think that was two months uh, wow. on the road, and just just actually doing something live when you're in a costume and you're seeing the fans and you're getting the reaction straight away it is it is you know so special it's, it's amazing working on the show but you don't exactly know what you're doing or are you doing it right and mm-hmm. you gotta then wait six months to see the scene so doing that event was was really special and um all the all the people working on it just had a had an absolute blast um and then the other live events uh, after that were the Doctor Who Proms in 2013 mm-hmm. at the Royal Albert Hall, which I played uh, a Whisper Man. Um, then the um, Doctor Who Symphonic Spectacular, which was a similar type of thing where there was a full orchestra playing the music. Peter Davison was hosting the show. Yes. Various monsters would come out and then the, they would play the music live, which hearing hearing an orchestra play in the music for Doctor Who Live is just uh, it's just mind blowing um, wow. you know literally you just get chills uh, chills going down your neck and I, I think I think we this was in Australia and I think it was possibly Sydney uh, they did a rehearsal and uh, they played the the song from the Christmas ep- episode that Catherine Jenkins sang mm-hmm. and um, there was a this big burly security guard by the uh, by the sound booth and it had finished <laughs> he was crying it was just absolutely uh, amazing you know it's just a uh, testament to the power of uh, power of the music of doctor who um so yeah that was amazing i did i did two stints in australia new zealand doing the symphonic spectacular um traveling around i think we went to mm. brisbane melbourne sydney Adelaide and Perth um but that was um that was that was very special and you know just getting to see all of these places as well was just a just an amazing opportunity um they then did you know, I think in 2015 a, a similar tour in the UK as well um and what else have I done? Oh, there was the uh, the Doctor Who festival, which was in Excel in London. Mm-hmm. Big, uh, the big official uh, BBC Doctor Who show, which was great. And I, I came out on stage as a, a Maya warrior, which was from the uh, the Girl Who Died episode with Maisie Williams. <laughs> um, did a little stomp around the stage in front of uh, Kate Walsh, uh, who uh, works for Millennium Effects, um, right. uh, and obviously Mark uh, Gatiss as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then um, uh, my good friend uh, Stephen Cranford, who was hosting the show, said, "And uh, obviously, underneath every mask is a hideous creature." And then they asked, unmasked me, and <laughs> I revealed my face. Um, so uh, yeah, that was great fun. And then I spent the rest of the day on the uh, stand for Millennium Effects, and all the fans were coming up and trying on the different different parts of the costumes. And uh, yeah, I went down. A, went down the storm um yeah. so so yeah so not not only just on the show but getting getting out and about down and dirty and uh, uh and taking the uh, doctor who to the public um oh there's yeah there's a few more on the list to go through so um the first peter capaldi uh, episode was deep breath where i played one of the uh, one of the droids in the the half man chamber uh, which was uh, which was great fun, and obviously getting to meet um, Peter for the first time was mm-hmm. uh, was uh, pretty cool. Um, then um, Death in Heaven, I played a unit soldier as well. So the scene where they're outside and the Cybermen fly out of St Paul's Cathedral, mm-hmm. um, I'm there. Um, and uh, when Missy gets knocked unconscious, me and my other friend um, Pete grab hold of her and drag her off. Oh, lucky fact, you. Very... Lucky yeah, you. I know. Yeah. Well, lucky me is what I thought, but the, <laughs> the very first take and what was written in the script was um, 
something like Missy gets knocked unconscious, uh, a unit soldier catches her, picks her up and walks her off. So we uh, did the first take, and then um, re- uh, this was directed by Rachel uh, Tulane. Yeah. Tulane. Tulane. Um, <laughs> and she said, it kind of looks like they've just got married and they're walking over the threshold and then changed it <laughs> for two of us. And I think we probably shot that whole scene maybe 20 times. And I know Come that on. Michelle Gomez oh. is is a very fit and, you know, svelte lady. But I think right. if I would have had to have done that whole thing of picking her up and walking off with her 20 times, it would have been uh, <laughs> it would have been a little bit too much. Um, I then end up on the uh, the aeroplane when uh, when Missy is uh, is on the gurney and she turns mm. around and vaporizes us. So um, I got a nice on screen death, which was oh, amazing. Oh, that's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, back in the Daleks for the Magician's Apprentice and which is familiar, um, which was amazing. And also seeing um, uh, Peter in the Davros chair was just, um, oh, was just of, incredible. Yeah. And it was just like, oh, my God, this is so good. And I can't tell anyone, <laughs> but wait until they see it. There was there was a couple of things cut out of that um, episode, uh, which there are a lot of things that are cut out of episodes. There, I, there was one, and it was something like um, when the Doctor had stolen Davros's wheelchair, I guess you could call mm-hmm. it. Well, it, it is actually based on an electric wheelchair. Right. Um, right. The, the Davros's voice comes across the uh, the PA system, and he says something on the lines of, um, Doctor, you'll never get away. I'm going to get you. And then, uh, and then Peter turns around and says, "Really?" He said, "You'll just spend hours crawling around in circles," <laughs> which um, <laughs> oh. I thought was, I thought was hilarious. But yeah, that that got omitted from the final cut. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then, and then there was another there was another scene where um, I think the Doctor's doing a is either. The, the doctor or either Davros was doing another kind of speech over the PA and they filmed, they basically filmed a load of shots um, and it was supposed to be the camera dropping down through the Dalek city so they kind of had a jib and they were dropping the camera down then it would go to another floor and it would Mm -hmm. just show the various life of uh, Daleks and what they get up to on the ship and there was one scene and it was basically in a chamber and um um oh it's really annoying me now, the director, and I can't remember her name. She directed Blink. Um, oh, um... Ha- H- Hetty? Is it Hetty? Oh, I don't remember oh, this. I can't remember her name. Oh, I feel terrible for that. But anyway, she, she basically said, she said, like, oh, what do you think we could be doing here? And um, and I think I think Nick Pay comes up like, with something like, well, we could be kind of, you know, there'd be a Dalek in the middle, there'd be a few Daleks around them doing maintenance. So, um, so the shot played out that uh, the camera comes down from the roof, and you see Hedy McDonald. McDonald. Hetty McDonald, yeah, 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 lovely lady. She's absolutely amazing. Um, so the shot plays out. There's a Dalek in the middle. The camera jibs down, and you see, I think, three or four Daleks around the Dalek in the middle, and we've all got our plungers connected to the hemispheres of the other Dalek because they are mm-hmm. basically the same size and then we look up as if we're listening to the uh, the audio being uh, spoken to us and then we slowly pull our plungers away and then afterwards we, we kind of thought probably what's happened is there's this room that things are going on and we're kind of slightly embarrassed <laughs> over what we're doing <laughs> 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 I'd, I'd, I'd love I'd love to see the footage of that because, um, you know, that that was just such an amazingly uh, great scene. But unfortunately, like with everything, they you know, you have to cut things down for it to make sense. Mm-hmm. Um, then uh, leading on from that was the uh, the Maya Warrior that I spoke of earlier in the, the Girl Who Died episode. And those mm-hmm. were absolutely amazing costumes that Millennium Effects made. I think they only had a turnaround of two weeks to build those five costumes. And uh, and they were built out of um, a plastizo, uh, which is like a, a packaging foam, a dense packaging foam that cosplayers have been using for years to make mm-hmm. costumes. And uh, 
And Kate kind of said, well, we're making stuff out of fiberglass and vac form and, you know, the the costuming community are making their stuff out of plaster. So why don't we do it? So it was uh, it was very nice that they kind of went, oh, in fact, the fans are doing this. Let's use, um, you know, similar techniques to and materials that they use. Um, so, yeah, it was it was it was very good that they were made out of um, uh, foam because they would have been exceptionally heavy. Um, there's a, yeah, there's a nice funny story as well because the because literally the costumes weren't ready until the first day of shooting. They had built um, the interior of the Viking Lodge um, uh, on a sound stage and. Uh, they hadn't seen the total height of the mire. And we had these huge, great big aerials on the back of us, which meant that we couldn't actually walk through the door. Um, So it's kind of square peg, round hole situation going on. So what happened was we we shot this scene where the the door bursts open. We have to kick the door in. We then march up to the door. They'll do, do something called a tape roll, which the camera will keep filming but it will actually be like a theoretical cut. We then have to bend backwards and limbo dance under the door in these Maya costumes. And, uh, and basically one of the, uh, one of the ADs was giving us instructions because he couldn't see, he would say, and Maya limbo, 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 clear. And then we could stand back <laughs> up again. So, uh, yeah, so that would, uh, that was, that was all great fun. And, uh, there is some hilarious footage on the cutting room floor of uh, that actually happening. Um, the Zygon inversion, I played a policeman when um, the doctor comes off of the beach. I'm sat in the police car having a mm. good staring contest uh, with uh, with Peter, which was uh, brilliant fun. <laughs> um, briefly played a Jadoon in the face of Raven, which was my shortest time on set ever. Um, there was, uh, it was in Trap Street and there was like a couple of security guards and then briefly you kind of, I don't know whether it's a perception filter or something, but they are actually Jadoon. So literally, uh, me and, me and my friend Matt, we walk onto set, um, they get the camera, shoot for 10 seconds and go, right, you're done. So, um, yeah, shortest day ever. Um, the Husbands of River Song, um, I played uh, a character in a full prosthetic. Unfortunately, you don't really see me. I'm actually sat behind River Song uh, in the restaurant scene. Um, the Return of Dr. Mysterio, um, I play one of the drones on the spaceship. Um, so you see these two drones with half their head missing uh, and bold heads. Uh, kind of step out and then walk up to the cockpit and then uh, Nardole gets strangled. Hmm. Um, that was me with half of my head painted green. Um, um, with the magic of television, they were decap- I think there's a familiar theme going on here with having my head lopped off on Doctor Who, but uh, I'm the man for the job, I guess. Um, yeah. the, the pilot episode, I played uh, played various Daleks. Uh, in that oxygen, uh, one of the corpses, the space corpses that you see stomping around inside the space station, um, which is amazing fun. Um, and um, I did a little bit as a UN soldier in the pyramids of Mars, where I'm mm-hmm. just literally sat in the briefing, stood in the briefing room. And uh, Lie of the Land, where I play one of the memory police officers, which kick in the door and arrest uh, arrest the woman uh, and drag her off. There was that scene was longer and cut down again. And originally, uh, they go in and find a shoebox full of lots of contraband, all banned stuff, which would remind the humans of the you know the real reality. And she's kind of going through this. Um, shoebox and she picks up an audio cd and she looks at it and she goes west life <laughs> <laughs> which i'm not too sure if you're familiar with the, the yes, boy band yes, west life yes. but uh that that was a really funny moment but like with anything they have to uh they have to cut it down to um to fit um and yeah and that's um to date that is the the last thing that i've done on the show well 
We have to mention you've done Sarah Jane and Torchwood. Oh, God, yeah, I forgot about those. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you were oh, getting on Because it's an hour, and you thought you were getting on. We were going to say goodbye to you, but no, we're, we're going to keep you on a little longer. Sarah Jane no, and Torchwood. I'll, I'll... I'll I'll quickly go through those. So, um, Torchwood, I played a soldier in the uh, Children of Earth episode. There was mm-hmm. um, there was a scene where um, where Eve Miles walks into a, a big sports hall and there's little body bags on the floor, um, and uh, I do get a line. It's I don't know. It's almost as good as my uh, Atmos worker line. I basically point and say thirteen fourteen. <laughs> um so <laughs> so i think they found my they found my range for dialogue on doctor who very well there um and then um yeah the um sarah jane adventures I've very important you... episodes you did on sarah jane adventures sorry you did very important episodes of sarah jane adventures yes um pivotal I episodes so, pay the unit soldier a couple of times, but then I also was in um, the the costume, the Shanshith costume, uh, the big kind of turkey vulture looking mm-hmm. thing. Now um, that was actually that was basically like a big hand puppet. So Paul Casey was playing the Shanshith, and his arm was up, controlling the neck. Right. He then had his other arm free. Um, and most of the scenes, they kind of did a bit of a Napoleon thing with the fake arm of the Shan Sheath. Um, but then there was a couple of scenes. There was one where the Shan Sheath was playing a harp. And then when the TARDIS a- appeared, he was banging on the TARDIS door and mm. playing the console. So they needed a an extra arm. So I was the I was that arm. Um, oh, cool. So I basically, <laughs> I had to. I had to go under the uh, the cloak and basically rugby tackle Paul Casey um, and uh, then sort of slide my arm through so it's the same length as his arm. Um, and then, um, and especially in the scene where he's banging on the TARDIS console, literally I'm just running around underneath the cloak, not being able to see, just kind of flailing my arm around to... Uh, give the appearance that um that it's uh you know a two-handed shanshi not a big um sock puppet so <laughs> so that was probably yeah probably the weirdest thing that i've done in the canon of doctor who um and then i've i've also uh briefly appeared in class as well mm-hmm. um, the very first episode um the shadow kin appears in the bedroom right um but they shot that scene but the costumes i don't think were finished yet so i did the entire scene in a in a green morph suit um with a couple of swords um kind of having this fight and then they uh overlaid a a, a scary shadow kin afterwards um <laughs> Andy Serkis has made a career out of it, so I, I'll take that. That you know, that is me. Yeah. Albeit Andy Serkis is um, obviously far more talented than me, but uh, but it was it was good, which has mean that I've actually been in um, every single. Yeah, you, you thing hit the quad vector, I guess. Yeah, quad <laughs> vector. Well, the, the <laughs> well, the the Doctor Who version of an egot. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but you were also in Rogue One, a Star Wars story, weren't you? I was, yes. Unfortunately, I didn't get on there to do any of the creature stuff. Um, however, I was in the uh, as a villager in the Jeddah village scene. Oh, um, just as a villager, kind of wandering around in the background when um, Jin and Cassian are kind of walking up just before they meet Donnie Yen's character. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, but to be fair, it was it was just a absolute privilege to be on set and actually just (laughs) marvel at the you know well marvel at the budget (laughs) (laughs) compared to to tv stuff um yeah no it was fantastic i did i probably did about four days on that and it was it was a gloriously beautiful warm sunny day which is very rare in britain so (laughs) um yeah it, it was it was great and um um it was it was very 
special for me as well because my other line of work is uh, I'm a stills photographer and filmmaker and DAP and camera operator. So literally getting to go on set like that, most of my time was spent just just checking out how they how they do things. So um, you know, it all all adds to my uh, tool belt of various things uh, that I yeah. do. Um, but yeah, I'll just I'll just briefly touch on on that work um uh i've i spent i think seven years with um uh, a company called collision for films in bristol where i worked shooting mm-hmm. music promo video which um we've shot stuff for the scissor sisters um really Radiohead, yeah. the killers yeah. the bees yeah it was um that was the first thing i worked on it was um it was uh, there, there, from Hell to the Thief album, which um, the weird little kind of stop motion woodland scene with animals, kind of having tea parties and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I was actually uh, hired by my good friend Sue Gent, who was a producer, um, to be a runner on that. And um, then when I was chatting to the guys, I was telling them about my photography experience. And digital photography was fairly new back in two thousand and three. Uh, and they were trying to decide how to stop uh, shoot the stop motion, and we kind of came to the decision like, well, can't we just shoot it on a digital stills camera and then load that into After Effects, and would that work? Um, and I and I said, yeah, yeah, that will work. So they said, oh, do you want to try it out? Tried it out, it did work, um, and then I got kind of promoted to um, camera operator for the uh, the stop motion stuff. Um, so yeah, so that was great, and. It, and interestingly enough, that is how they shoot all stop motion animation is using a digital SLR uh, and just shooting still frames. So um, I was quite honoured to have uh, kind of just gone, you know what, sod it, let's do it. Let's not talk about it or have a meeting. Let's just <laughs> do it. And and it happened. Um, so, so we did that for about seven years. Then the music industry obviously was in quite a weird place. Um, because obviously what with the internet and budgets and stuff. Um, so all the guys went off and started doing their, their own thing. And then, um, the, uh, director, um, I worked with Chris Hopewell. He, he then had a meeting, uh, with a guy called Stanley Donwood, who's an artist, um, who also does the, the artwork for Radiohead. And he said that they've got a new album coming out and, did he fancy doing a little weird 30 second thing to go out on Instagram? Um, oh. And Chris said, yeah, he said, I've, I've, I've always had this idea of um, doing the Camberwick Green witch trials and Camberwick Green was a quintessential um, uh, British animation uh, mm-hmm. from, from the early 70s. Uh, and then Stanley said to him, he said, wow, he said, that's kind of weird because one of the tracks is called Burn the Witch. So um, serendipity kind of stepped in and, you know, they had a meeting and got very drunk in my friend's bar in Bath. Um, and, uh, yeah, then uh, basically Chris said to them, he said, how about we just make a whole music video because the amount of production just to make 30 seconds, we may as well shoot a whole music video. Um, so we, we then shot, yeah, the Burn the Witch video, um, which... Um, got loads of publicity because Radiohead withdrew all of their social media presence and there was kind of, it just ironically enough, made them more visible on social media because they didn't have social media presence. So um, (laughs) it's it's obviously some some uh, some thinking behind that. Um, And then uh, yeah, then we started shooting music promos again. So we did one for Avenged Sevenfold called The Stage which was a marionette puppet show. Mm-hmm. Um, another video for Father John Misty. Um, and uh, most recently, uh, a video for Run the Jewels called Don't Get Captured. Oh. So um, uh, cool. stop motion animation is still still in my blood and thriving well. Cool. And, um, and hopefully um, there should be some more things in the pipeline soon. And speaking of that, what's coming up for John Davy in the future? What, what, what can we look for you in? Uh, not unemployment. I'm not sure at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> unemployment. Um, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm looking not... forward to unemployment. Um, no. 
I, I quite enjoy sporadic unemployment because, I, you know, you can't work too hard because it will just be too much like hard work. Um, yeah, uh, this show's been hard work for six years, so this is the last one for... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I haven't really done really anything in front of the camera this year, but I've got lots of uh, video and photography projects um, on the go. Uh, and lots of conventions to go to as well. Um, um, I think I'm going. I think in September I'll be on the Sci-Fi Sea Cruise. Yes, uh, Dan um, Harris told me to ask you about this. I completely forgot. So you're yes, going. Yes. You're going to have a great time. I was on the I very will, first I one. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely plug it for Dan as well. So it's a, it's a fantastic event. It's going to be going from Seattle, stopping off at Astoria, so we can all fanboy out over the uh, location for the Goonies, um, down to San Francisco, and then I think back up to Victoria and Seattle. So, uh, yeah, I've heard I've heard many a story about the Sci-Fi Sea Cruise, which is, uh, I think, normally around the Caribbean. Yes. Um, so I'm uh, really looking forward to that, and uh, potentially a couple of other things uh, in the States um, which haven't been confirmed, but... Um, but yeah, no, I absolutely love it, and absolutely love the um, the uh, American fans because it's just um, yeah, it's basically a big party, mm-hmm. uh, a big drinking party as well on the evening. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah, I love coming, love chatting about my stories and showing my showing my photographs. And I've I've now done a little PowerPoint presentation. For, it's about forty five minutes an hour long about behind the scenes on Doctor Who. So uh, that always uh, that always goes down the storm. Did you um? Did you see my presentation at Gallifrey One? Yes, yes, I did. You, cool. You sound very. No, no, I, I, I really <laughs> was into it. Uh, you are an amazing. You're, you're amazing. I, I'm oh, so glad you. we had you on the show. But yes, the the the, the panel that you did uh, with uh, was really really good. Why don't you tell everyone about it? Uh, well, basically I did a, um, I would probably say it was almost a semi stand up routine, uh, PowerPoint presentation about behind the scenes on Doctor Who. And I had various photographs, uh, from the show and also the ones that I've done in Australia and the live events, uh, and just talking through it and, and, uh, basically explain what happened and funny little bits and pieces, uh, that went on on set, um, and I I was very I was very fortunate because I was losing my voice after <laughs> the. I um, like me right now. <laughs> yeah, it, it was it was um, I sounded like Clancy Brown from uh, Highlander. It was, <laughs> it was getting that low, and it, this was after he had his throat cut by Sean Connery. Um, in fact, the day after Lick that, down, I lost then, uh... my voice totally. I, and, you know, I had to go and hire a car and I was just whispering at them. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, I, 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 I think it went down very well. It and, did. Um, it really it was I very perform- funny. It was very funny. I performed a, a little, um, a, a little song that I have written as well. Uh, that yeah, I, I saw that the A to Z, A to Z song. Yeah, that was well, what... really good. It was, I yeah, it would take forever to learn that. Oh my gosh! <laughs> well, it, I'm still learning it. Well, what it what it was based on was uh, Daniel Radcliffe was on the Jimmy Fallon show and he performed um, Alphabet Aerobics by Black Alicious, mm-hmm. uh, which is a, a very very complicated rap song. And I thought, oh, wouldn't it be really cool if you could do one like that, but with Doctor Who monsters? Um, um, and then I then I started writing it, and I kind of went through kind of the easy ones. I thought, right, I have to name the character, but then only use words to describe the character with the first letter of that character's name. So I kind of did that for a couple of days, and then I just thought, what am I doing? This is just insane, and it was driving me mad. I had a I had the TARDIS wiki and the uh, and a thesaurus and a dictionary and. Uh, it, it, it drove me mad, so I kind of left it on the back burner. But then the uh, the Doctor Who experience, the the big kind of exhibit in Cardiff, mm-hmm. was closing down, and uh, I, I had a word with them because I've worked there a few times doing 
uh, live performances and said, oh, can I film this thing and basically be next to the characters that I'm talking about? Um, Because I just thought, oh, that would just look great. Um, So I did it. Um, And then, um, yeah, edited it all together. And then the Doctor Experience closed. And then eventually I I put it out on social media. And very kindly, my friend Tony Perna, who runs the social media in Australia, I sent it to him. And I think he then sent it to the social media guys in the UK. And they stuck it on the... uh, official doctor who facebook page but i've um i've done an instrumental version with just the lyrics that you can download and you know i want people to do it um and actually perform their version um so um so anyone listening out there if you um if you basically uh go to the uh my youtube page you can download the instrumental all the lyrics are there and uh you can do it yourself all right. Did you, did you want me to attempt to do it? Uh, <laughs> you know what? Before you do, before you attempt to do it, I want to bring on someone who's sitting in the green room, Mr. Jeremy Raddick, uh, Gareth from the TV movie. Jeremy? Hello. Can you hear me? Hi, Jeremy. Yes, we can hear you. Jeremy, I want Jeremy to hear this, too. Jeremy I... uh, is a friend of the show. We invited him. He's going to be the last guest so that you're not the last guest. Okay, <laughs> Jeremy? Ah, good. Okay. So right. he's he's gonna be the he's gonna be the Malcolm McDowell who kills Captain Kirk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, Jeremy okay. is not McDowell. But what, I, let, let's a, hear this. What an honor. Let's hear the A to Z, A to Z. Excuse okay. me. Okay, it's 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 gonna be um it's gonna be a cappella because I don't have the inst- or can't figure out how to do play the instrumental. Um, okay. So uh, <clears throat> let me cl- let me clear my throat. <laughs> I've been talking for an hour already, so I'm yes. be a little bit out of breath. On Easter Sunday, in fact. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So. Absorbal off absorbing allies available. Adolescent adipose atrophy attainable. Bokine breeding billion year barrowman. Boneless, bidimensional, Banksy S. Bitumen. Cat kind concealing the cure for contagion. Cyber Cybermen converting the cranium. Daleks delivering diabolical destruction. Davros, designer, dictator, disruptor. Eliza, eternally entangled excavation. Emoji bot excited by every extermination. Foretold, frightening, fair goes faster. Future kind, ferocious, fleeing fifth master. Gallifreyans guarding with greatness good going. Great intelligence, Gandalf and Grant all knowing. Half handles hate from having his history. Headless monks, heretics, hounded by delivery. Ice Warrior Infiltrator are, in fact, inside iceless ionic power scribbled image resides. Jagglefest jaws jammed by the brave journalist. Jadun Jal gibberish japes with the Joneses. Cantafari dream crab clinging to forgetfulness. K1 Kettlewell kill Gareth killing mess. Lazy Kaz lending Lucretia style scam. Laszlo looks like a Lincolnshire lawman. Maya meets Maisie medieval mayhem. Mr. Sweet Mysterious manipulate the brainstem. Nesting nervous, nibbling neurosis, Nymons never full, nom nom network myth. Udon side and occasionally oppressed, or grons ordered, organizing obsessed. Pig slave picking products for procedure, peg dolls panicking, people in prop keeper. Quark quickly kills all quarreling quotes. Queen bat milk quells the quarantine antidote. Red Ragnos refusing relocation rudely. Richard Lazarus rejuvenation unready. Silent sightings scribbled very secretly. Sotaran strax similarities seemingly. Tall teller trouble telekinetic torture. T Rex trampling in Thames turgid water. Unit united under uniformity. Uvondi urgency unhinged uncertainty. Vashta vanquishing victims in the verges. Vigil violent with value verses. Whispermen Walter wrecked in the resting place. Winders wire puller ward off the worst case. X mystery extermination endings extra. Zeraphin of Zarafas, Zylot, Zyster. Yana yelling at Utopian Young. Getty yomping yards of yellow yak yarn. Zapping <laughs> zombies in zero senesone. Zygon overzealous G lot xenophobe. Wow. Oh, wow. That was, that that was good. Wow. I, I hope you didn't mind that uh, with my West Country accent um, slang on it as well. But no, uh, it was no, that, made it, that made it better. That yeah. that works for me. I'm, I'm, hey. 
Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so it's basically A to Z of Doctor Who monsters. Um, if you go to my Facebook or Instagram, which is at John Davy zero zero seven J O N D A V E Y zero zero seven. Um, or on YouTube, um, you can then link to an instrumental version which has the lyrics on there and um, and do it. Go for it. This is yeah. the, my first attempt at rhyming or rapping or singing or whatever it is I've just done. So <laughs> if, I, if I can do it, anyone can do it. <laughs> okay. Nice. That was great. John, I want to... Thank you so much for coming on our show. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. I, I hope I just didn't kind of, you know, just talk and... <laughs> no, and no, it was great. This was, this was one of our best shows. I loved it. We, we, got, we, we talked about all Mark Who 42 of the episodes that you did. So, yeah. Hey, was... I'll have to call it the Mark Who 42 episodes now. Yeah. There you <laughs> <go>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I like that. All right. John Davy, the man behind the monsters on Doctor Who. Thank you so much, uh, John. Thank you very much for having me on, and I'm I'm sure we'll um, catch up soon in the States. Oh, definitely. We'll, and maybe I'll see you uh, at the Bon Voyage party before the cruise. Oh, yeah. No. Are you going on the cruise? Uh, I'm not going on the cruise this year. I'm not going on this year. Uh, right, but you're, you're going to go for the, uh, the piss-up beforehand then. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Beforehand, definitely. <laughs> Great stuff. All right. All right. Thanks, John. Cool. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Take care. Cheers. Right. Cheers. Bye bye. 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 All right. Gareth uh, is the act is the character's name. Jeremy Raddick is the actor's name. Jeremy, welcome back to Mark Forty Two. Thank you. It's an honor to be here right before you go on hiatus, and also to hear that amazing A to Z. Well, wasn't know, it? That was collection. really that was good. Great. Oh yeah, that was great. Anytime I... Professor Kettle, Pe- Professor Kettlewell from Robot gets a, is a, I think he's from Robot, gets a shout out, then I'm yeah, uh, yeah, I'm yeah, happy. Robot. Yeah, oh definitely. yeah. <laughs> yeah. How are you guys doing? It must be bittersweet. It's uh, going to take a little break for a while, but uh, yeah, we're taking a little break know. for a while. I'm not sure how long yet. Uh, it's been you know six years of doing this. Uh, producing, directing, and editing every episode that we've put out there, all 215 right. plus, uh, has has taken so, its toll. But I, I'm going to so recuperate. So you're, you're, you're about to enter the wilderness years, and there'll yes. be lots of people writing strange novels about your show, and then you'll come back uh, in a few years with a northerner leather jacket kind pretty, of accent. Pretty mu- yeah, I pretty much will put on an accent and do it. Right, uh, right, and... There you go. That'll be good. Yeah, I, you yeah, know, and... we're calling this episode, this episode, the title of this episode is Survival Part 3. <laughs> so we're ready for the wilderness years. In fact, when we go out, when we when we play the credits, we're going to go out with the end of Survival Part 3. So um, it's perfect. Somewhere we the open with the beginning of the, the episode. Teeth. The master had just uh, uh, done his... Uh, little evilness and then we started the show and so we're right yeah well in honor in honor of that what i've been doing is going around my neighborhood and converting wayward teens into cat people oh the cool last day and a half so uh i hope that's okay i'm just trying to fit in with the themes so. no 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 that's perfect that's perfect you okay, have any of the cat people with you um no because um they're all down at the uh at the youth center beating up an old ex army man so, that's good that's, yeah that's, yeah that's, that's he, my he was a bad guy anymore. he was terrible i didn't like he him was, at all yeah he was a jerk he was, he was a, jerk. a big jerk jerk yeah. face yeah that's right i, I made up that's a word right. jerk face i don't know uh, <laughs> i yeah so jeremy what's been going on in uh capeless crusaders well, uh, it's been great. You know, obviously this, the 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 site is still doing well, and it's been it's been going uh, amazing, and um, lots of articles getting attention, and lots of great <laughs> news to write. Um, yeah. p- probably the big news that I have actually mm-hmm. to reveal right now is that um, I, I'm going to be I'm about to take over as the editor for um, Image Comics's Rose series, which is Seriously? written by. Yep. Yeah, wow. taking over. Yeah, as of issue thirteen. So, 
Cool. Uh, I'm going to be editing that book, uh, working with uh, the great uh, creative team uh, of uh, Meredith Finch is the writer who wrote mm-hmm. Wonder Woman for DC. And, uh, it, and she's writing Xena, I think, right now, the Xena Warrior Princess uh, series. And um, Iguara, who's a, an amazing penciler, is, is doing the art on that series with Triona Farrell on colors cool. and uh, Cardinal Ray on letters. So now, it's, uh, it's editor, a great, great team. As mm-hmm. editor, starting with, epi- with issue 13, 13 is kind of bad luck. Can you renumber <laughs> the series so you start with 42? No, 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 no. God, Mark, no, no. Oh, God. 40, oh, man. Is the no. answer for everything. I don't oh, yeah. have that kind of power. But, um, yeah, no, I think it's it's going to be good luck. That's the end of the first of the second arc. So I, I'm coming aboard right with the, the climactic chapter of the second arc. And then we'll be moving into the third arc after that. So wow. uh, it's a it's a good spot to join, and it's a great series, and uh, I'm really excited to be uh, to be given the opportunity to edit the scripts on that, and it's it's fun. Yeah. Mark, uh, Mark, please don't encourage comic books to renumber. I hate it when they do that. I, know, I, know, I, know. I hate I that. I hate that. Hey, don't at least do I'm that. not telling you to go back and do another issue one. I'm actually okay, advancing it. Knock on, it. Knock I'm actually, I'm knock actually wood, advancing please. it. And making it so, like, there were, like, 20 issues that you missed. Too bad. But now pick it up from here. Okay, okay but... Yeah, you know, that'll... Just, just please that'll be careful really help, with that. Yeah. That'll, that'll help really the sales, help sales, won't it? Uh, yeah, it'll do it. Something like 30 missing issues to help yeah. sales and help people <laughs> so, jump on. Yeah. So, Gareth, you, you and I, we just made a great team on a game show the, That's a right. weeks ago. The Mark That's 42 right. Gareth. Oh yeah. yeah, that was yeah, that was a what a what a name we came up with. That, that was, was a hard fantastic. name to come up. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Hey, no one told me we had to come up with a name. I just I, I know. Didn't... I should tell Squee that you know, hey man, you know, give us a little time. Give we us a warning. Something better. Yeah. yeah, give us a warning, yeah. and we'll, next time we'll come up with a, something damn better. But if, yeah, but Mark, we've had time to think about it since then, and we have not come up with anything better. So <laughs> no, it's still the Mark Rue Forty Two Gareth. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Undefeated. Undefeated. Oh yeah. So yeah, I, I, I you know, I didn't. He, I didn't listen to the end of it, so who won? Do you know who won? I actually don't. I actually don't. Oh, I, well, we won. We we, we, we won. We, That's why we aced our section. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I. We think. are the kings of Doctor Who. That as knowledge. far as I, as as far as I as far as you and I know. <laughs> as far as we know. <laughs> That's a it's a variation of old Chevy Chase joke where he goes, "Hey," he says to, uh, I think it's ted knight and caddyshack he goes hey that's not true as far as you know right so uh <laughs> that's what i always like to think about keep keep your blinders on it's fun sometimes yeah wow you know this this show has been so fun to do for the last five and a half six years i i i've nice. enjoyed this so immensely and um gareth what what I, I know you, you you're not a member of our show, but you are a friend no. of Mark Who Forty Two, and and I, am. I, I I just would love to hear your opinion on our show. I mean, you must have listened to us. Yeah, Listen absolutely. You have? Okay. Yeah, sure. And it's yeah. I mean, well, you know, especially when I'm on it. No. Yeah, uh, well, you're right. That one you want to listen to definitely. No, it's great. You know, I mean, every time that I've come on the show, and every time that I've listened to it, you know, there's a there's a love that comes through on about about the subject and you know certainly uh doctor who has no share of its admirers and and that's you know it's it's a show that i think uh uh kind of engenders a passion um but what i you know sometimes that passion can be taken too seriously sometimes it can be too dry and what i liked about your show was that it was always it never lost the sense of fun and camaraderie uh no matter who was on who was hosting Thanks. and uh and, and, you know, I mean, that that makes it enjoyable and that makes the, the time you're listening to it, you know, uh, just fly by. And, and, you know, I think you balanced really well uh, episodes where people learn something that maybe they didn't know about the show or thought about the show in a different way uh, mm-hmm. with uh, with silliness. So with which, silliness. Which is, definitely with silliness. Which is kind of which is kind of like what Doctor Who should be about anyways. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. We're going to we're going to miss you out there in the in the landscape of Doctor Who podcasts. But. 
Uh, if I know you guys, I don't think it'll be you'll be gone for too long. You just need to get a little rest. Uh, Two hundred yeah. shows, man. Whew. Well, that's, dude, I mean, the only thing I I can say is one day we will come back. <laughs> yes, we shall come back. Until then, there must be no regrets, no tears, no anxieties. Just go forward in all your beliefs and prove to me that I am not mistaken in mine. Goodbye, Marku 42 listeners. Goodbye, my dears. Okay, so I did it. I got that out of the way. All right, good. Uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Uh, wow! Well, way, way to put way to put the emotional punch on the moment, Mark. Well, no, that no, but I I really do mean it. I really do mean it. Um, I love all you guys. Everyone who's done the show, who's been on the show as a guest, who's been a host, all our hosts, all our convention team members. I mean, uh, a couple of geeks. You guys are so special to me, and I, I'm glad you guys. Because they're getting married, too, but I didn't put them together, Trish and Ed. I put, they, they were getting married beforehand. But, <laughs> you know, we had another married, uh, soon-to-be-married couple helping with the conventions. Uh, uh, and, and I really I appreciate all the help that we've had, all the, all the love we've shared here at Mark Who 42. I really do. And, and you know, I feel that we've done good we, we we've educated we've entertained we've we've done what doctor who was meant to do the the remit back in the 60s educate entertain that's what we've done i'm just you know i'm just happy that the entire time that the show has been on that i'm just happy that we managed to have somebody come on and give like a definitive opinion about the unit dating stories. Thank, which if 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 uh, you know if Katie Manning is listening, thank you, thank you very much. See now, now that she now, the, once once she put her foot down, I'm like, okay, that's it, that's it, that's it. Somebody who actually worked on the show at the time has given their opinion. That's it. I'm done. Nobody can say anything else. Okay, unless it's somebody else who worked at the same time she did. But if it's not, yeah, no, shut up. Yeah, shut the up. only person. The only person. Argument's over. Sure. <laughs> would be Terrence Dix. That's the only other person that would maybe be able to do it. That's yeah, it. yeah, That's, yeah. You know. Yep. Well, yep. we didn't hear and from he had... Terrence. We heard it from Katie. So nope. we're going. With yeah. Katie. So you know what? That's it. That's it. My 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 foot is down. That's it. Unit date. You know, the unit stories took place in the seventies. That's it. I'm done. There you go. Nope. I'm not going to hear any more arguments. She said. Joe Grant herself said it. We're done. She did. Okay. She did say it. We're I want to thank all of you for listening. I want to thank you, Jeremy, for coming on. As our last guest on this iteration of Marku 42. Well, it was a real honor, you guys, and uh, all the best of luck. And I look forward to hearing you when you come back. And when you do come back, uh, you know, don't 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 forget to ask me to come on. I'll. I will definitely ask you. I back. will definitely be there as long as uh, as long as uh, I still have teeth in my head and and uh, and voice to speak. I'll be happy to come on and. And uh, you know, bring the tone down a little bit <laughs> around here. Um, you know, if, if you ever, if you know, if you ever need help on the teeth part, uh, Trish is a hygienist. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll get you down here to Reno. You know, we'll we'll get you down here to Reno. Get you know, we'll get you in her chair. She'll she'll fix you up, won't won't you, Trish? Oh sure. Like I mean, there you go. <laughs> there you go. See. That's there. Problem well, solved. I appreciate that. Right. Well, you know, guys. Uh, you know, I'm going to sign off and let you guys, uh, you know, sign off for your fans uh, on your own as the as the original team. But thanks again and best of luck in the future. And uh, hopefully you'll be back in my headphones soon. Thank you so much, Jeremy Raddick. We appreciate you. got you it. Bye. No problem. Take care. Happy okay. Easter. Right. Happy, Happy Easter. Easter. Bye. Happy Easter. We're in his head. We're in his head. Uh-huh. Well, uh, final words, guys. We're almost done with the show. We're, we're over the two-hour mark, so you know we're we're gonna let this go just a little longer here, live here on Spreaker Radio and on the Mark and Forty Two apps, and recorded for your podcast listening in the future. Uh, oh, oh, let me just say before I say final words. Markwho42.net will still be around. We are still going to post new stories, Doctor Who and other science fiction. Michelle Turner will be sure of that. She is our news director at the Markwho42.net, and she's going to continue doing that. We may have some surprises along 
the next few months, maybe uh, an occasional live show. I don't know. You know, we'll we'll figure it out. But I want to let you know that if you want to listen to our old shows again, or if you're just tuning in this time and you've never heard our show and you want to try our old shows, all the podcast sites that sh- play our show will have them for at least one more year. I am keeping everything going for at least one more year. We'll probably be back before then. So, you know, then it won't really matter. But I'm keeping it out there. Keeping it reels. Right, Ed? Yeah, well that well see, you're you're taking a break. I'm still doing this. I'm still doing the show. Well I'm thinking of taking I mean, I did... I'm thinking of taking a job at key, at Let's Be Reels and, and, and being a being on keeping it reels. I don't know. I have to talk to uh, some people about this, including you. Uh, who knows? Well, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, as, as they, uh, as they say in the biz, you know what? Have your, hey, have your people call my people. We'll do lunch. We'll do lunch. We'll do have lunch. you seen Ant Man? Yes. Yeah. I just saw it last night. Oh my god, that was a great movie. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. It was really good. I, saw, I, I enjoyed yeah. that. Well, Instead remind me preparing remind... for the show. I watched Ant Man, and I like. Okay, it. well, remind. Well, you know what? Remind me. Remind me, Mark. Uh, I'll give you my impression of uh, Ant Man's friend Lewis. <laughs> oh, I'll give you an impression of Lewis. Rem- <laughs> but that's He's later. Gay. That's later. later. That's a, maybe after that's the later. show, you can do that. After the show, yeah. After so, the show. final yeah. words, guys. Zion, why don't you go first? You've been quiet. Zion, this is live radio, folks. Zion, are you still there? Are you on mute? Uh-oh. No. There's Zion. I heard Zion. There he is, yep. Zion? Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, final words. May Marku 42 live on forever and prosper. Thank you. Thank you. Ed, final words. Well, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna cross the streams and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna uh, grab another fandom. In this case, I'm gonna steal a bit from Transformers writer Simon Furman, mm-hmm. and I'm just gonna say, you know what? Of course, Mark Who Forty Two will be back. Uh, why? Because it never ends. True. Yeah, Jim Soren. Jim Sorensen, if you're Jim oh, Sorensen, oh, yeah, if you're Jim listening, Sorensen. that was for you. Yeah, we had we had we. We had Jim Sorensen on the show. I remember yep. that. Yep. Yeah. If he's if he's listening, he'll know he'll know what I mean when I say it never ends. It never hashtag, ends. Hashtag hashtag Furmanism. <laughs> the song that never ends and it goes on and goes on. Yeah, this song no! never no! ends. No! 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 Ends. no! no! Trish, final words. Uh I will borrow from Walt Disney and alter it a little bit and say Mark Who 42 will never be complete as long as there is imagination and Doctor Who left in the world. Wow. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Walt, nice. Disney was, Walt, Disney was, Walt Disney was a nice guy. Or was he? Yeah. I don't know. Was he a nice guy? I, I've heard things... People have heard stories of Walt Disney. And I, oh, I'm sure he was... He was as nice as he could be. Okay. But nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> except Mark Who 42. Oh, well, that's not me. even I'm that. Sorry. Not even Mark Forty Two. Okay. <laughs> not even Mark Forty Two. No, I'm not perfect. I'm not because per- if I was perfect, we'd still be doing a show every week and still be uh, coming to you because I never have got tired of it. I would get tired of editing and producing and all that stuff. Um, I just want to say to all our fans out there once again, we really appreciate you. We love all the interaction we've had with you and we hope that you will come back when we come back marco 42 is a family we have way over 5,000 people on facebook that uh read our stuff and we couldn't be happier we've got 7,000 people following our website uh on and off so i mean it, it, it's it's an amazing thing um Krypton Radio, I know this episode isn't on Krypton Radio, but Krypton Radio definitely helped our exposure. We were their number one show. Uh, I'm sure that uh, the people that replace us, and it's not replacing, uh, the group, Jeremy and I, when we had done that 
the game show, it was for Gallifrey Stands podcast. Gallifrey Stands is going to take the Friday position on Krypton Radio where we were. So you'll still get to hear Doctor Who uh, on Krypton Radio. So, um, you know, it won't be gone, but we will. And we are going to end our wilderness ears with... Oh, 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 I, that was the bell. I think time's up. Um, let me just say once again, thank you to everyone who's ever had a part in this show, who's ever done anything for this show, who's ever enjoyed this show. We're going to close now, going into our wilderness years, with the end of the episode that this episode is named after, Survival Part 3. So bye, everyone. Say your final goodbyes, guys. Bye, everyone. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. See you guys next Saturday. I'm keeping it real. It lives on inside you. It always will. Good. And the master? Who knows? Where to now, Ace? Home. Home? The TARDIS. Yes, the TARDIS. There are worlds out there where the sky is burning, where the seas sleep and the rivers dream. People made of smoke and cities made of song. Somewhere there's danger, somewhere there's injustice, and somewhere else the tea's getting cold. Come on, Ace, we've got work to do. Forty-two has been written and presented by Mark Baumgarten, Iggy Matthews, Zion Kiros, Eduardo M. Fryer, and Trish Fryer. This episode was directed and produced by Mark Baumgarten. Visit markwho42.net where you can register and become part of the Hooniverse Army. We can be contacted by email at mark at markwho42, subject line, question mark. are owned by the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation. Marku 42 is owned and copyrighted by Mark Baumgarten 2018. Shawarma! Shawarma! Samuel Jackson appearance! Yes! <laughs> oh, Chris Hemsworth, where are you? Uh, but, so that's the end of our show. We hope you enjoyed Marku 42 as much as we did putting it on for you. And what more can I say but... Allons-y! Bye, everyone. Geronimo.